level. Okay, we've got Glenn's cautious level. Yeah. <laughs> it's two on the 34s as well. It's not just oh, this, really? It's not just okay. this, it's not just this think, antenna yeah. that can, can track. Okay. Uh, this is the only antenna that can command it. Oh, okay, it's right, okay. So, but the others can transmit, but they're not high enough Exactly gain? right. Are they high enough power, but not high enough gain? Is that... The same power, not enough sa gain. Same power, not enough gain. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To actually, so if, this is, uh, there's two, this, two transmitters on here that we use, or transmitter powers that we use yep. in Voyager. One's 18 kilowatts, the other one's 75. Right. You start squeezing that through a gain of 63 dB, then so you get a nice pencil beam all right. the way through space. Right, okay. Power. Uh, so with the 34s, you need around about 80 kilowatts to get the 18 kilowatt equivalent. Yep. Which we don't have. Got it. And civil aviation hates us. Yeah, right. But 75 kilowatts is, we we'll actually do command sequences, but yep. we use the 18 kilowatts just to essentially send no op commands to it, so which yep. essentially time of resets. Okay. So, and what we do with that one, we just keep on sending the same command. Uh, with Voyager 2, there's a, it lost a tracking capacitor. Yes, I read about ago. that, yeah, yeah. So it means yep. that we have to know to within a fraction of a hertz. That was one of frequency. our questions, yeah. It has to be precise, right? Yeah. So, so what we yep. do is, on a regular basis, we do a BLF, which is a best lock frequency. Yep. Sorry, you what? Yeah. would you like me to look at you or the camera? Oh, Sorry. no, but a camera. camera. I'm actually paranoid because <laughs> uh, we were at the stargazers and I wasn't allowed to look at the camera. Oh, okay. <laughs> was, no, the, the producer was right offside and he goes, don't look at me. And in fact, if I looked at the camera, there was a second take. Really? Uh, really? We won't have any second takes around here. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> so, looking at it, you've got 8,000 tons, 4,000 below the bearing, essentially 4,000 tons of swivel. The high, it's all hydraulic, 43 is a hydraulic antenna, so, and it uses a unique platform called a hydrostatic bearing, so there's no friction, so it, the whole antenna that moves rides on a film of oil 7,000 of an inch thick. Pressurized 2,500 psi, it just lifts at the top. Voyager has a nice big high gain antenna, uh, so we all have a number of missions, and I'll, I'll give you an example, so we have Kepler which is literally just outside of uh, shitloads and tiny... Uh, like and tiny, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Mm. I mean, we, we do talk about, like, Voyager 1, the Voyager 1 yep. signal saying that the CD is, like, less than one twenty billion of a watch battery. A oh, watch battery, yeah. Not, yeah. yeah. I don't know any of that good stuff. It's on the website. All the time in the I education have, and outreach side. I have read that on the website, <laughs> yes. We were also talking about the, the distance of Voyager as uh, going, to, going to Pluto, coming back, and going back out again. Yes, it's three times the distance of Pluto. So we'll just get the camera on the ground and we'll just shoot I, Richard yeah, I, straight up I, I and up his nose. Right now. Up. Yeah, I don't right. even have a wide enough lens to do that. Yeah, right, right, just every answer, yeah. <laughs> so all we have is... <laughs> I don't have a wide enough lens to uh, get that. I think you probably have to just go off, off, off the... Off the uh... And if you can discern movement, so you'd have to sit there for a while. So that's just the reference point of... Yeah, so you'll see how slow. It's all, it's all in his head. It's all in his head. You'd have to sit there for three. Oh yeah. Unity, yeah. Oh, that's which getting are big. Huge yes, as well. that's and getting so, big now. You know, and yep. I mean, I love, love this stuff. But on the top of my house, I have an ADSB Raspberry Pi. Nice. As yeah. Well, nice. I've got home automation Raspberry Pis. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've got a sprinkler system, which is... Oh, of course, right, right. <laughs> so, so, yeah, podcast. We're pretty clueless on the RF side yeah, of things, yeah, to be fair. Yeah, we're both RF, RF clueless. Well, so. straight, RF is difficult. When, when I went to... Uh, I was in, in college, and I was in, so I was in a marine college, which is... Uh, and it was pure RF. Oh, oh really? Yeah, so right. radio Smith yeah, charts, yeah, Smith yeah, charts, yeah, Smith yeah, charts, yeah, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But not so much as that, but it, it was, I suppose, big cavities... Uh, big right. Clystrons. Yeah. Uh -huh. so you talk about hardware and so yeah. it was the meaty stuff. And after coming from, so I, I came straight from college to uh -huh. here, yeah. what they are today. And what I thought was big at college, <laughs> uh, right. and, you know, I stand next to a Clystron, the 400 kilowatt Clystron in here yep. is. Oh, hang on. And tell us about the Clystron. I can show you. <laughs> you can show us the Clystron. I can. Oh. Without. Mounting an antenna. Come on, come with me. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I'll get the box, I'll get the box. We've got to go, all right. Oh, oh. Spare, of course. Oh, spare, oh, that's fine. <laughs> it's not our entire no. no, good. It's a commercial product. Oh, ITAR, oh, right. Oh, you ITAR. Yeah. <laughs> I'm allowed to see ITAR stuff. <laughs> You're allowed to see ITAR, yeah. So this is just storage down here? Uh, oh, okay. Are those racks anything interesting we should know about? Sorry? Are those racks anything interesting we should know about? Uh, actually, they're the controller racks for the 18 kilowatts. Oh, okay. Yep. So you've got the PAs there. Oh, so the 18 kilowatt transmitter is different to the others that are four. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Right. And we've got an, uh, we've got an, uh, an MG set. Right. So in the uh, uh, powerhouse, yep. which has the MG set. The, the ancient floor, which is here, and then you've got the MG, which is the size of a building, and so we can have one there as well, which wow. is the 400 kilowatts. So, so lots of high voltages, you know, 100 uh, kilovolts, yep. so it actually generates a lot of power. Wow. But this is the 18 kilowatt PA and wow. controller. I'm getting all this stuff, Dave, don't worry. You've got the motor and the, and the, the two generators here. <coughs> oh, made, in made in the USA, Chris. Every antennas that we interface with on uh, the networks uh -huh. uh, is given a number. So if you look at Canberra, we've got the 30s and the 40s. Uh, and that's, it's not Canberra, that's continental. So mm. yeah, okay. continental Australia has uh, the 30s and 40s. Uh, this is Deep Space Station 43. Yep. So, and actually, if you listen to the last 10, 15 seconds of the original War of the Worlds recording. Right. So, as in the, the musical, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, you hear, say, Canberra, DSS-43, coming Canberra. Oh, really? So, okay, so, yeah, so there you It was go. actually a factual antenna. So. Wow. So, this is 43. Uh, we're just behind it with the, uh, the beam waveguides, we've got Deep Space Station 34, 35, and 36. If you went over to Goldstone, yep. uh, they're in the teens and 20s. And if you went to Madrid, they're the 60s, uh, 50s and 60s as well. Mm -hmm. so. And it's not only important so when we're communicating as well, mm -hmm. but it's important for predict generation, so we know exactly mm. which antenna is which. Yep. So, uh, and also scheduling. Yeah, yeah. So we don't give them names, so we no, give no, them numbers. Right. So, so we go, oh, yep, so DSS 43 in this case, it's uh, mm -hmm. pass number 102, which yep. corresponds to the end of the year. And uh, so. Yep, and, and the time frame of when we're supporting it as well. Yep. It's the anniversary of the opening of 43. Oh, well, what? It is. It is. It's wow, 44, 44 years today. 44 yeah. years today? Yeah. Okay. I was six. So? Wow. You were six. <laughs> I was minus 11. Yeah, she went in. Actually, I started working here in, in 1988. Was employed. My first job was 89. Okay, so you're. So, yeah, and. Uh, well, I started younger. And I was employed for the Voyager in, Voyage 2 uh, Neptune right. Encounter. I read that, yes. Oh, so, which we probably want to talk about. The, awesome. the Neptune Encounter. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. Actually, any encounter, any yep. landing is, is awesome. It is so. awesome, yeah, I can imagine. I tried to get here during the Mars uh, The MSL? And, yeah, and they said, no, just forget it. Actually, I, I was here uh, 
I was uh, the liaison for uh, the US ambassador yep. uh, in, in our meeting room here. Yep. So I got to share it with sort of non-technical people oh, who were really passionate yeah, about yeah, it yeah, as well. Yeah. And it, it was nice, so like, you know, because I was partaking and I wasn't in the ops room. I was nipping yeah. out into the ops room during the exciting bits uh, <laughs> and then coming back. But so, yeah, the, cool. everybody was so excited yeah, about the whole great. thing. That was great. And it was a, one of the, I think it started off with uh, of the Little Landers, uh, the, the ones before Odyssey. Yep. Sorry, uh, Opportunity and Spirit. Opportunity and Spirit, where that's right. Where we started using the orbiting spacecraft as relays yep. Yep. because with Pathfinder or any other orbiter mm -hmm. that we'd had, we'd lose, as soon as they hit the atmosphere, yeah. We'd, we'd lose comms. Yep. It was a blackout. Yep. And the next thing we heard was essentially either nothing, nothing. <laughs> bad exactly. sign, or we actually heard a tone right. or, a, or an initial signal from the planet to say, I've arrived safely. But uh, we had so many spacecraft around Mars acting as exactly. relay. In yeah. fact, we had sort of MRO yeah, taking great. photos. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had the, uh, yeah. the ESA MEX, so yeah. we had our Odyssey and, and MRO, which were the prime ones. Yeah. So, and That's they right. communicate on, on, on V8. VHF, hmm. so they have a VHF link. Uh, I think actually it's, it's UHF. I'm not recording any of this. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, with no audio. Yeah, with no audio. So, so with this uh, so low frequency, oh. yep. with this low frequency connection, suddenly we have a relay. So, so we can track it yeah, yeah. all the way, way down. down. So oh, we no, can get great. we can get a blow by blow yeah. as you know as a parachute as, as deployed as a sky. Yeah, or, oh, as a, <laughs> so so. <laughs> It was the first time that, I mean, you always have that, okay, it's gone in, then you'd have the, the anticipation, are we going to hear from it? But this was the first time we'd, we'd experienced it all the way down. And wow. Xbox yep. actually came, they had an Xbox Land Mars oh, rover okay. right. where they use Connect and you could actually bring it down. So before it actually went in, I'd been landing it day in, day out. It was a fairly, it was sort of an anticlimax when it did happen. Yeah, right. So we had it in the ops room, which was quite bizarre. We were tracking the spacecraft the behind them and we're all landing so, <laughs> so cool. simu in a simulated version of it. Oh, I would love to have been And South Road mm -hmm. in. into the site. And you've got 30 kilometers one way and the other. But as far as Canvas is only 12 kilometers away. We were just over that hill. Yeah. But that hill is a, a big stopper when it comes to RF. Right. And so, and if we did have any RF, it would shoot straight at us. Or we'd be tracking the wind as well. Uh, so as the day goes on, we have the Mars rising. And I'll, I'll show you the schedule that we have. Okay, uh, these are the SDR. So everything in the green is, I think, what's being supported now. Right, no worries. That point eight, let's have a bit of they're, they're all scoped. So yeah, what I was asking is, does it ever just like feel like a normal job? Like, so I used to work in a fab and it was like, oh. like sometimes you walk in and you're like, what am I doing? It's just yeah. like, it just hits you sometimes of just how weird it is. Well, if it's, uh, the, the good thing about space exploration is there's so many events, there's so many milestones. And I suppose we're lucky because if you look at a single spacecraft, look at Voyager, you know, sort of, you know, it's 1977 till today. And there's, there's been, after the encounters, there's, there's I suppose the only milestone we're looking for now is when it, it goes into interstellar space. Right, right, so right. Voyager's done its dash as yeah. far as uh, sort of the adrenaline, the big stuff. Right. The big stuff. Uh, but Cassini with the grand finale, so coming up in September, where they're taking Cassini and throwing it in, in, into Saturn. So they're throwing it into Saturn, and you know that's Cassini has been a, a really nice spacecraft for us. It's a really active spacecraft. Uh, it's always doing amazing stuff, and they release all the stuff that uh, they discover or essentially so sort of bring down from the spacecraft almost in real time. Mm. So we can see data coming down through Canberra, and then within 24 hours, uh, the Cassini project's releasing it to the public. Mm. So there's always something there. And then you've got the landers as well. But sort of as we're doing all these spacecraft, we're starting to come up for the, for the new missions. So there's... It's like, a, it's always refreshing. So, I mean, Voyager, yes, is the exception being here since 1977. Uh, but uh, if you look at the lifespan of a project, it's probably five or six years. But in that time, we've had new projects coming along as well. And certainly when you look at the landers, each one's trying to outdo each other. 
So, you know, MSL went down to the sky crane. So they're thinking of a different method, a different method now, you know, to bring heavier weights down. Mm -hmm. And each time they do it, I go, nah, it won't work. Mm -hmm. All the way back from the Pathfinder days with the, essentially the airbags. Yes. And, and I can still remember thinking, because, you know, we, we were here, we had the projects out here explaining how it was going to work and the airbag and sort of, you know, the petal and it's going to open and we're, and we're going, oh yeah. And what's the likelihood of this happening? As in, as you're describing it, and, and they're all, even they're saying, fairly good. <laughs> so, so, so now. Uh, zero. Yeah. Well, uh, considering sort of, uh, I suppose, the problems that we were having with, with Mars, you know, so we were having so many spacecraft just going straight into it. Uh, and so it wasn't a successful planet for NASA or anybody else. Mm -hmm. And so I think NASA's really turned it into its own now where you know, so we're assuming success, so, and, and failure is an exception now, so where it was probably the flip side, you know, 10, 15 years ago.